Are you considering buying a pond prowler or maybe you have already and you're just not sure how to haul it or even if you can based on the vehicle that you bought? Well, today, this video is for you. Behind me here is the Bass Pro Shops Pond Prowler 8, coming in at eight feet, around 100 pounds. And right here, we have a 2018 Subaru Forester, and I have no problems taking this to any body of water that I wanna fish. So for those of you wondering if you're able to haul it without a truck, yes, you can do it. It's really easy, it's inexpensive, and it works. So I'm gonna show you guys how I haul the Pond Prowler on my car in today's video. All right, first off, we're gonna go over just a couple pieces of equipment that you're gonna need to be able to get this on the car. First off, you're gonna want a blanket to set on the back of your car when you lift the boat up. I have really nasty scratches on my car from the first couple times I did this. I don't know why I didn't go out and do this sooner, but I learned, whatever. Here for this blanket, this is a Goodwill $3, uh, real thick, like quilted blanket here. You want a thicker blanket. You definitely don't want a thin one or else those rocks are gonna rub through. And you guys will notice here on two of the ends, I have stuck a carabiner through the blanket far enough in to where it's not gonna pull out. And I have just tied a piece of little paracord here and I have two loops that will loop back into the carabiner. I will show why this is important later in the video. Another thing you're gonna need here, this is extremely important, are the straps. Now I here have four ratchet straps and two cam straps. I have four ratchet straps for all the corners and then the cam straps are used to secure it on the sides of the boat. Even though the cam straps are technically optional, I would 100% recommend them and I'll show you also in later in the video. The last thing here, this is also one that is optional and this is something I don't use on every trip. However, this little dolly here, which is homemade, works really, really well. And I like it for situations where you're not able to get your car right up to the pond or the lake, right? You use this to put the boat on and you're able to actually walk it, you know, a couple hundred yards or whatever and get to the body of water. This thing has really helped me out on ponds that don't have a lot of access. I'm able to walk the boat into the pond to get access. And now you're fishing something that very few people have ever taken a boat in, which is really helpful. You can just sit in the parking lot get your boat on the dolly, take your sweet time getting it all ready to go, and then whenever you're good, just wheel it right down to the launch, drop your boat in, bring your dolly back up to your car, and you're golden, you're, you're fishing. So it makes for very short times at the boat launch, which no one wants to take a long time with the boat launch. Don't be that guy. I actually watched a video on how to build this, so I will not take credit for it. I am gonna talk about it, however, in a later video talking about some of the mods for my boat. But for now, let's get the boat on the car. You have to take everything off before you put it on top of your car and vice versa, right? You can only put things on once the boat is off of your car and ready to go. So that's one thing, it kind of sucks about taking, you gotta take everything off and on and off and on every time it goes off of your car. That's just the things you're gonna have to do when you have a car and a pond prowler like this. It's time consuming, but it still works. One thing that really helps at least from what I've learned here, is just having a five gallon bucket to put some of your stuff into. Obviously the oars really don't fit. Uh, the fish finder and battery box, I don't typically put in there. But for instance, like the rod holders, you've got the anchor, you've got some of like the smaller parts, like the cup holder, the even the fish finder, you can put that on top, that way it's not squished by the weights so of the, the anchor and stuff. But just having all of that in a five gallon bucket is really nice. That way you can just put it in your car, you don't have to worry about stuff shifting around. All right, so say I got everything on the car, the next thing we wanna do is we wanna get our blanket and put it on top because this is the last step before the boat goes on. All right, so see how I put it under that little loop there and then I take the carabiner hole and loop it. Boom, now it's not going anywhere. You just do it on the other side and now no matter what happens, if there's wind or downhill, whatever, right? it's gonna stay on. That way, if you're lifting your boat up, randomly it falls off, and now you're already holding your boat halfway up and you're screwed, so you're gonna scrape up your car. So, nice little mod. All right, now this is the part that you've all been waiting for. How do I get it on top of my car? For those of you that know, I have some really bad arm and hand issues. I don't know what it is. We're still trying to figure it out. But even I, with these medical conditions, I can still put this boat on top of my car without overdoing anything. So if I can do this, anybody can do this. First thing you're gonna do here, there's definitely a knack to getting this on. You're gonna use your handle in the front, which I've actually added on the boat. You're gonna lift this up and you're going to just kind of pull it up like this, right? 
So now what we're gonna have to actually do is we're gonna walk it by each leg closer and closer to the car. So if you guys notice, I'm gonna get real close to the boat here and I'm going to walk it. See, you notice how I'm just walking each leg, and making sure it's even with the blanket, just like that, right? That's really easy. You're gonna rest this on the top of the car. And from here, it's basically a clean. You're basically just gonna clean the boat up and then you're gonna scoot it on over the top. And the Pond Prowler 8 is only like 110, it's like 100, 110 pounds. So it's not a lot of weight. I mean, your average person should be able to get this boat on top. Like I said, I got medical conditions and I'm still able to do it right now. We have it out a little bit here. Now we're going to lift this while keeping the boat on top of the car. You notice it sank a little bit, so we can kind of maneuver it up a little bit. Now, we're gonna do that clean. So we're gonna go like that, get it over the top, and then just push it on, just like that. Really not that bad. Taking it off is the same way, right? You would just go like this, you would switch, you'd go down, and then you'd walk the boat out a little bit and lift it down and bring it down to the water. But I'll show you guys this step one more time here. Put that up, we're gonna lift that up. Right? We're gonna kinda thrust a little bit here, do some, some pelvic thrust, get it up. We're gonna clean and push. It's really not that bad. At this point, we can take our blanket off and all we have left to do is just strap it down, which arguably is the most important part of this whole process. By the time you have this thing all strapped down, this boat should not even budge. You sh it should be so locked on that car, there shouldn't even be a wobble to it. So I'll show you guys here. There's kind of a certain length you want this, for me at least on this car. As you notice, I do have the two crossbar racks on my car. That just came with the car when I bought it and it actually worked out really well. I don't know if you have like that whole like basket rack on the top, if you can still put it on, if you can still put the car over it. Uh, if you guys have done that, let me know in the comments. I'd love to know because I kind of want to get a storage rack on the top of mine. But the two crossbars right here work great. I will put links in the description below, by the way, for all the products that I was using in today's video so you guys can pick them up. What we're going to do here, we're going to take our uh, long end of the strap and we're going to go in this way with it. So we're just going to put it through here. Then we're going to grab it. Make sure we've got enough room. And if you notice, these came with the boat right here. So you're gonna put one over the top. Perfect right there. And then you're gonna take this side and you're going to boom, just like that. Now, I don't let them sit loose like this. I'm actually gonna strap it down a little bit here, just like that. But the key is, is you don't wanna pull tight on this because if you pull tight this way, it's gonna move the whole boat because this is the only position that's anchored right now. So we're gonna get it through here. I just do it on the outside on this one. And then you're gonna do this one on the outside as well. Lock it down, not to where it's turning, so just loose, just like that. Oh, also make sure there's not too many twists and turns in your ratchet strap, because if there is, you're gonna have this really weird buzzing noise when you're driving, and it's really annoying, especially if you're trying to blast some music. So just make sure you don't have a lot of twists and turns on that thing. All right, this one right here is stupid easy. All we're gonna do is just throw our strap in. You guys notice all of my straps, I go in and then out, not out and then in. So I go in through here, right? I'm gonna bring it out just like that. Now the thing is with this little cleat right here is you want this ideally to face this way, but you're gonna have to wrap it around that bar. So when you get this through, you're actually gonna wanna make sure it's facing back like this because by the time you pull it through this little bar, Boom, now it's facing your way so you can secure it down. You're gonna pull it through, tighten it up, and boom, you're good to go. So once you have all the four straps down, the ratchet straps, then go back through, adjust them so they're pulled tight, then I go through a third time and pull them maybe one more click to make sure they're really good on there. And then you can go in with these guys and you can pull down real hard and make sure that thing's not going anywhere. So right now, for instance, I don't even have the other side strapped on at all. 
that thing is barely moving. So obviously when you get that whole other side on, this thing ain't budging. This thing, I can go 65 miles an hour with this thing on top and have no worries. The key here with this is to triple check. You wanna continue checking this thing and make sure that there is no spots where it's gonna budge because that's how, that's my worst nightmare is to have this boat shoot off of my car onto the freeway. That would be just horrible. So make sure it's all tightened. I triple check it before I leave. If I'm going to a local pond, maybe I'll skip the cam straps, but if I'm going more than 30 minutes anywhere, I've got all six straps on. I might also add as well here, if you are going on a two hour plus long trip with those straps, I typically take a break every hour, pull over on the side of the road, find a nice spot, and check all the straps just to make sure everything is okay because those cam straps especially will start to loosen after about 30 minutes to an hour. They definitely aren't, aren't as tight as when you first pull them down. So just make sure to check them every hour or so and you're gonna be fine. Okay, last step for me here, you should have everything in your car at this point. The only thing you should be missing is your dolly. So I actually put the dolly on top in the boat. I use the boat as basically a storage rack. Put it on the top and then I can kind of the little lip on the car and use the boat to pull myself up and then just kind of lightly make sure that wood isn't scraping that plastic but just slowly get it over and now you're golden if you want you can take there's a little battery strap on in the boat just wrap that thing around the dolly once pull it down and now your dolly ain't moving at all but i haven't had a problem with it moving anyway so if you guys enjoyed this pond prowler video you guys are also going to love the two up here a lot of tips and mods and hacks and things to make your pond prowler experience better consider subscribing i got a lot of a lot of tiny boat videos coming to the channel soon hope you guys enjoyed we'll see you guys next time on humbug videos